welcome to welcome to all to the uh, technical session number 2 and for this session the title is climate smart natural resource management for futuristic agriculture and chair chairperson for this session is dr s pawar director icr iai of sr modipuram and co chairman is our dean college of agriculture central agri university imphal professor indra sarangtham and we have two keynote speakers in this session one is dr ml jhat and the other is dr as pawar and then of course there are nine presentations but without wasting any time i hand over the stage to the chairman dr as pawar to conduct the session pawar sahab aapke bagal se jo pedon ka jo view aa raha hai na bahut acha aa raha hai ye aap nahi laga sari bodipuram ki ye aap nahi lagaye the aur is a principal scientist system agronomist and sustainable bhai chairman ko introduce karo uh, sarvan sir, pehle after this because second lecture is chairman sir that's why mat karo pehle chairman ko introduce karo second lecture jab ye hai unko to by data considered as read but otherwise also i think chairman's uh, introduction should be first sorry but protocol Al ko ek already already chair give na sir today chairman is sir dr as pawar director i cr i i fsr modipuram so in this first keynote lecture dr ml jhat sir so i read the bio data of dr ml jhat sir dr ml jhat sir is a principal scientist system uh, agronomist and sustainable intensification strategy leader for asia and north africa at international maize and wheat improvement center cimit After obtaining PhD degree in agronomy from ICR IRI New Delhi, he served Indian Council of Agriculture Research as a system agronomist for 11 years before joining CIMIT in 2009. Devoted two decades to intensively work on basic and applied science in agronomy, soil science, uh, uh, soils, and environmental to promote the conservation of agriculture. that is known as ca best sustainable intensification and climate smart agriculture in small folder system of asia his research on uh, conservation agriculture has provided scientifically sound basic basis and direction through 300 more than 300 peer review high impact journal articles books manuals etc for promoting sustainable intensification through policy changes led to the impact at scale in small holder system of south asia he has been on forefront in capacity building to develop new cadre of researcher across the asian country he has served several reputed international and national scientific bodies and including international iri un food agriculture organization international society of precision agriculture usa etc in various capacity he fellow of national academy of agriculture sciences dr jhat has several awards recognition to his credit including icr uh, prestigious uh, rafi ahmed kidvi award 2018 gold medal 2015 of the indian society of agronomy fellow of indian society of agronomy new delhi the fai golden jubilee award for excellence 2017 PS Deshmukh Young Agronomist Award in 2004 of ISA Young Soil Conservation Award 2006 certificate of appreciation by government of Cambodia IPNI FAI award for best research on management and balance use of input in achieving maximum yield by the International Plant Nutrition Institute the Fertilizer Association of India Uh, professor mahatim singh memorial award 2015 by society for advancement of wheat research icr iiwbr india 
then play of uh, appreciation in 2014 by ap wari cmit fao bui thailand and recognition award of international plant nutrient institute usa no taking much time i request uh, to chairman sir to start the keynote address sir so uh, chairman sir uh, with your permission uh, maybe we can uh, start uh, the presentation i uh, sir dr jat you are allowed and requested to make a presentation of course they have given the time limit of 30 minutes but i will request if you finish it within 20 minutes so that other speaker and discussion can take some more time no so we'll try to finish it within 20 minutes so dr jat go ahead uh, maybe we can stop wherever i am in 20 minutes so <laughs> thank you so much um i so i think uh, i mean let me try to make be best use of 20 minutes uh, without wasting a lot of time uh, thank you so much sir uh, for uh, for your kind permission and thanks to the university for this opportunity to share some of our experience uh, uh, on on this important theme and my compliments for the organize uh, to the organizers for organizing such an excellent uh, event linking to the uh, atmanirbhar bharat uh, so in that respect uh, as usual uh, my my presentation uh, uh, is on uh, you know my favorite topic uh, which is conservation agriculture and uh, conservation agriculture based sustainable intensification rather and how uh, those uh, can help in achieving the key uh, sustainable development goals uh, which is uh, uh, most important uh, and uh, there's a commitment of the global community and and and, and uh, the government of india as well and as you can see uh, there are uh, 17 sustainable development goals and uh, i'll try to uh, link how Uh, conservation agriculture based sustainable intensification uh, are linked to uh, you know several sustainable development goals uh, but friends uh, uh, you know task is tough and it's difficult because we are uh, we have left with 10 annual harvest to go uh, to achieve the sustainable development goals which is uh, not a long time and i think uh, we have to uh, achieve all of those and uh, we are uh, you know in between somewhere and uh, in achieving those sustainable development goals uh, on one side we have to achieve those goals on other side uh, we have a perfect storm and we have to deal with that storm the storm of climate change of water of biodiversity lot of land degradation and compounding pressure of the population we have lot of malnourished people and there are lot of uh, conflicts and you know uh, because of uh, the natural resources so i think we have to deal with this uh, this storm and uh, dealing with this storm uh, i think uh, we need to have the business unusual approach uh, business as usual is not going to help us so uh, in that business unusual i'll try to make a case how conservation agriculture based sustainable intensification uh, can help us uh, you know uh, dealing with this storm uh friends so uh, you know on top of it you know uh, when we 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 come up with this uh, perfect storm covid was not there but now we got covid you know over last 5 6 months and which has a huge implications and 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 it's compounding the 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 pressure and the challenge uh, you know on all of us uh, so you can see here uh, we came up with this paper a few days back uh, you know we tried to make a story and uh, you know this came in world development journal uh, you know saying indian agriculture air pollution and public health in the age of covid and i'll try to link how conservation agriculture can help here uh, you know in 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 uh, addressing you know the issues coming out of out of the covid but somebody is interested this is a short paper uh, if if somebody want to have a look and go to you know google and online it's it's uh, freely available so can have which can tell how 
uh, how things are interlinked and how conservation agriculture can help addressing this. Uh, friends, we also did a detailed analysis, uh, you know, how COVID is going to have the impact on, on agriculture, uh, on, 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 the, on the health, on the pollution. And we took this uh, you know, analysis from Northwest India, and there's a paper, uh, I hope, coming out soon in agriculture systems. And, and, and you can see how the, the COVID-mediated challenges uh, you know, are, 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 are impacting the rice, uh, you know, for example, transplanting, and then those rice transplanting, uh, delayed transplanting because of the labor availability issues are going to push uh, you know, the, the, the rice harvest you know, towards the, the, uh, the, the lower temperature regimes. That means if, if and, and that lead to the lower window between the harvest and planting of wheat measures the, the, uh, the, the spikes of, of the pollution because of the residue burning and that too in the cooler period. So we, we did analysis around, around that and, uh, and, and, and then suggested what are the measures we have to take to address this. And again, uh, I think conservation agriculture you know, came up uh, you know, prominently to address some of those issues. Uh, more results uh, from the same study and you can see the kind of yield losses uh, you know, under different scenarios are, are expected uh, if we don't take any measures you know, because of the COVID issues. And, uh, and, and you can see, and we did a detailed district level analysis and you can see uh, if we don't do, you know, with the business as usual, there will be 13 to 35 percent of the production losses in rice wheat system. And uh, an economic loss of $1.5 billion, which is significant. I think which is more very significant, highly significant. Uh, that's because of the COVID. And to address this, I think we, we, we need to have conservation agriculture-based sustainable intensification in place. So that's where conservation agriculture, it's not only try, you know, contributing to achieve the sustainable development goals, but also you know, addressing the issues like COVID coming in between unprecedented issues. Uh, so this is again, uh, you know, another detailed analysis. So I'm not putting everything here, but I think in, in, in a week or so, or, you know, 10 days, this paper will also be out. So somebody can have a look. And now, uh, you know, argument was, uh, you know, like, uh, could uh, coronavirus drive the farmers to adopt sustainable practices in Indian India's breakfast basket? So based on that analysis, somebody can go to the summit side and then have a look on this uh, detailed blog and uh, we made that argument and and we say yes conservation agriculture based sustainable intensification can help even the issues coming out you know because of the corona not not because of other issues but also the corona and the response is on the bottom side you can see uh, that's a figure coming from punjab government the secretary of agriculture of punjab and they say there's a 34 percent rise in the direct seeding of rice this year. So that's a one of sustainable agriculture practice, the conservation agriculture. And Punjab farmers save 600 crore rupees and 30 percent the groundwater. Uh, more than half a million hectare of, of a, a rice uh, planted by direct seeding. So I think uh, if we have the technologies in place and, and those challenges can become the opportunities. So that's, uh, that's how uh, in a conservation agriculture based sustainable intensification can help us. Uh, I'll not read this uh, for those, I, I guess that there might be some students for them, conservation agriculture, uh, uh, you know, um, we, we depict it, uh, you know, so that uh, people can understand basically, uh, you know, involves three interrelated principles of, uh, of no till or mechanic, minimum mechanical disturbance or reduced till, whatever you say, and uh, keeping the soil covered, whether with the organics or, or, or the crop residues or the cover crops or whatever, and uh, you know, use the efficient, uh, you know, the, the cropping system or crop rotation so that uh, you get the advantage of all those uh, things. So um, uh, this is uh, this is about you know briefly about conservation agriculture. And uh, friends, of course, uh, you know by now we we could have the latest figure available again because of the COVID, uh, the World Congress on Conservation Agriculture, which was scheduled from 29th of June through 2nd of July at Switzerland was postponed, but so we don't have the latest figure available, but until 2016, uh, around 180 million hectare uh, area was, uh, you know, under conservation agriculture globally. 
and by now i expect it's more than 200 million hectares uh, you know the the figures are being compiled and i'm also in discussion with uh, colleagues from fao so there's a significant increase and this is uh, you know the same figures you know with by continent so i think uh, in terms of uh, conservation agriculture asia and africa uh, has to go a long way and, and and we have to make significant progress of course we made some good progress but a long way to go and uh, i think uh, conservation agriculture uh, is picking up now in in these regions as far as india is concerned uh, uh, we uh, we got some ups and downs because of uh, several issues because of uh, the uh, the counterproductive policies i would say uh, but uh, still uh, not bad and i think it's picking up again and you know and the crisis uh, you know sometimes uh, leads to in the potential opportunities so residue burning helped us our adoption of conservation agriculture the corona helps us adoption of conservation agriculture so i think we people you know more uh, more respond to to the crisis rather than the normal situation so i i expect but i still i i say two and a half million hectare of of ca in in, in india uh, which is documented in our recent paper in nature sustainability uh, conservation agriculture also provides windows of opportunity for sustainable intensification through cropping systems optimization i think mechanization and all those things so again i'll not read it but uh, that's that's uh, uh, you know uh, always provides the the opportunities uh, provides opportunities for redesigning the production systems on the paper coming from our collaborative efforts from uh, icr csri in nature scientific report uh, and uh, you know that talks exactly on redesigning of the irrigated intensive uh, you know production systems and uh, if somebody is interested can have a look or contact the lead author, Dr. H. S. Jack. Uh, also, uh, you know, if you talk about diversification and many of the areas, uh, you know, and, and diversification, not because of sake of the diversification, but I think diversification is linked to several sustainable developing goals, whether it's talk about water or talk about air pollution, you talk about soil health, you talk about nutrition. I mean, all those are sustainable development goals. and. Uh, uh, diversification, for example, in Northwest India, the governments have been pushing, but it's not happening because of uh, because of several reasons. But if you put together the conservation agriculture and the optimized cropping system, I think that can help. So that's again, uh, you know, some of uh, some of the results coming from from the research uh, being undertaken, uh, you know, uh, by CIMIT uh, together with our partners, uh, you know, in ICR and universities and others. Uh, so in 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 you know this slide provides a summary and then oh, each of those arrows uh, you know takes you towards uh, the you know the sustainable development goal so productivity that means uh, you know zero hunger that's one of the sustainable development goals you are increasing that means ensuring food security water saving you know, there's a significant so that's another sustainable development goal uh, you got a lot of labor issues so and energy energy is another sustainable development goal uh, the clean environment so you are reducing greenhouse gas emissions so that's another sustainable development goal and of course soil health and other things are also there so i think conservation agriculture really takes us towards achieving the sustainable development goal and that's why i try to link so in in paper in our uh, nature sustainability paper came a couple of months back we did the meta analysis of conservation agriculture research uh, across uh, past 10 plus 15 years and uh, you can see uh, uh, this conservation agriculture really links uh, to 10 sustainable development goals so if you talk about conservation agriculture based sustainable intensification that helps in achieving 10 sustainable development goals out of 17 directly so i think uh, that that's that importance of conservation agriculture you can see uh, you know how uh, conservation agriculture this is uh, you know this paper uh, in meta analysis and you can see of course the results varies but uh, and we did analysis and this is yield uh, you know percent change uh, whether it's on farm and on, on station or the combined but uh, there's an advantage of um, of conservation agriculture based systems uh, this is uh, in terms of for example the the um, you know uh, the grain yield uh, the water and 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 the net income so again they take us uh, directly towards uh, the sustainable development goals in different cropping systems uh, of course system to system variation is there whether it's a rice wheat maize wheat or rice maize or, or other cropping system uh, this is uh, this is again uh, you know uh, in, under soil type so again you know ca is not a silver bullet uh, you know it's it, it applies everywhere i think you have to make your own recipe 
depending on your cropping system, depending your soil type, depending your agroclimatic conditions. Uh, and, and that's how, you know, sometimes we, you know, enter into the conflict, so working or not working rather than, you know, uh, you know looking at where it is working and where it is not working. So, so define the recommendation domains of, of, of conservation agriculture. Conservation agriculture also provides resilience to the climatic risk. And I think this session is, uh, you, know, you know, towards climate change and climate smart agriculture. So I, I have a lot of slides around this, but time is limited. So, so conservation agriculture provides resilience to all the risks. And we have proof, full proof evidence uh, generated across years uh, that provides, uh, you know, help, helps in uh, reducing the risk of the drought or the heat or the excess water or water logging nutrient stresses and salt stresses and just to show you how that links to the sustainable development goals i take just one example uh, and then this 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 is again coming from our research uh, uh, at cssri karnal and uh, don't be confused uh, jart at all because there are several charts so don't give all the credit to me this is hsr uh, so conventional delays uh, you know uh, and 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 if you do conservation agriculture over a period of time what you are harvesting with uh, with 150 kg nitrogen uh, with conservation agriculture you are harvesting with 105 kg nitrogen rather you are harvesting a bit more and that's how you reduce the nitrogen load and you can go back and see uh, this paper just uh, it's it's online in advances in agronomy exactly tacking achieving the sustainable development goals in agriculture the crucial role of nitrogen in cereal based systems so i think you know, there are different ways how you achieve the sustainable development but it's a detailed paper exclusively on nitrogen again nitrogen is linked to all the 17 sustainable development goals and somebody's interested can go uh, you know to this paper and and read uh, also the conservation agriculture and soil health or resilience i think uh, you know there are truckload of papers, uh, you know, available on different aspects, uh, conservation agriculture, improve the soil health. And, uh, and, and with not only the soil chemical, physical, but biological and uh, uh, the soil carbon sequestration, which is uh, a, a lot uh, is being talked about. And uh, somebody can go and see there are you know, quite a few students work with us uh, who generated real good, uh, you know, information on soil carbon, uh, detailed studies, uh, you know, available also the uh, the the uh, the biology and i think not only the bacteria fungi actinomyces but in depth analysis of of, uh, of soil uh, biological properties uh, this is example uh, or metagenomics yeah. study, um, available I mean, uh, work done at ssri by Madhu. and uh, i'm there's another paper just uh, you know just you know it's it, it's online uh, it's online uh, 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 Sorry, there is some background noise, I guess. Um, also, conservation agriculture helps in reducing the environmental footprint. So, some of the examples, um, you know, in, this is rice establishment methods, direct seeding, and all those in methane emission. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, you know, and somebody want to have the detail. One of our paper in Nature Scientific Report in 2017 can have a look. Uh, you can also see, you know, there are other, you know, production systems where there's a reduction of the global warming potential with conservation agriculture ranging from 18 to 62 percent, which is significant. There are a whole lot of work in, you know, conservation agriculture in eastern indo gangetic plain, and you can see a lot of reduction in the, in the greenhouse gas emissions uh, together with increase in productivity. And uh, this is also published. Uh, my colleague Mahesh Gathala you know, got a, a series of publication, you know, from Eastern Gangetic Plain around all those aspects. Also, uh, I, I, you know, residue burning is one of uh, one of the main issues, and uh, you can see conservation agriculture is one of the potential solution. And uh, you can see this paper came uh, out in Science last year, uh, and uh, you know, you can see uh, what are the alternate methods available and uh, how they are helping in reducing residue burning and in the air pollution. Uh, friends, uh, conservation agriculture, not only at the plot scale, but if you talk about the country scale, uh, it provides us cost-effective opportunities for climate change mitigation in Indian agriculture. And this is uh, the detailed analysis we have done, uh, you know, pan-India, you know, sector, livestock and crops and, and, and state level. And, you know, so detailed analysis and these are different. So there are, there are you know, technologies or practices negative cost and also mitigates uh, the and, and the 
the greenhouse gases emissions. So we have a technical mitigation potential of 85.5 uh, million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent and a lot of that, that, that goes to water management and, and conservation agriculture and all those things. So you can have a look, this paper is published in Science of the Total Environment. Um, we are, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, what is uh, coming out of the field and we are just saying it's happening, happening, but I think we have to uh, make some good articulation of uh, the key results coming out of those and, 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 and help uh, the policy planners to understand better and, and make the policy decisions to, to scale the, the, the conservation agriculture based sustainable intensification practices. So uh, these are the series of, uh, you know, policy briefs, uh, you know, coming out uh, uh, based on uh, the research what I have shown to you and uh, they are really helping. So for example, this document uh, uh, is the one which plays the important role in uh, having the special uh, program of government of India in response to the residue burning thing. Uh, and that came out uh, based on the work what we've done. Uh, there are other, you know, series of policy documents uh, together with, uh, you know, there are several organizations. So I see our task that Koroda led these and, uh, and, and, and we developed uh, this conservation agriculture roadmap based on the advice of uh, Dr. Mahapatra, the DG ICR. And uh, this is the most recent one, uh, the, the roadmap for conservation agriculture in Eastern Gangetic Plain, very important. And uh, this is available just recently released and uh, led by Dr. Bhatt. Uh, and we contributed to it. And, and, and you can see how can we achieve the sustainable intensification through conservation agriculture in Eastern Gangetic Plains. And also you can see the, the labor and, uh, availability because of COVID and uh, how, you know, they are impact. So also there, uh, but, uh, but I think, uh, as I say, ultimately, you know, everything has to reach to the farmers. Uh, so we have to understand, you know, the scaling, you know, uh, science of scaling. And uh, so I think the, the, uh, you know, there are critical uh, enablers for scaling of conservation agriculture or climate smart agriculture, whatever say, and every, ev everybody, you know, every agency, every sector has a role. Uh, they are, they, there is no substitution like a private sector can substitute government or government can substitute private sector. Everybody has a role. I think everybody got some, some, some critical role and every has, everybody has to come together. I think uh, we as a researcher has, has a double role. We have to feed into uh, the private sector and the government policies, and we have to feed into the extension and the farmer also. So I think we have to play a double role, but everybody has to play play important role in it. Uh, I think this is my uh, almost last slide. Uh, I would say that, uh, you know, business unusual within business, I mean, usual business settings we have to do. I mean, we need not to reinvent the wheel, but I think we have to have a different uh, lens how, how we see things. So uh, I think we need to understand the challenge uh, uh, and challenge under different scenarios. For example, you know, challenge before COVID and challenge within COVID and challenge after COVID. I, I don't know what will happen. We are trying to do some analysis over Asia, but, but uh, we have to understand the challenge and otherwise how we, how we uh, address that one. And once we understand the challenge, I think we have to explore the windows of opportunity. Where are the windows of opportunity for, and I cited the example of, uh, we, we have a challenge of COVID, we have a challenge of, you know, labor because of the COVID, but then we explore the windows of opportunity. Let's go with the direct seeding. Let's go with the no-till and all those things. So those are the windows of opportunities. But uh, I think that, you know, in the group or, or, or in the audience, there may be, you know, a lot of startups. And uh, I would say that uh, they don't need to make a radical change, you know, in the technology. Rather, uh, we need to zoom the focus and, 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 and towards a smarter target. And that's what uh, is the important. Uh, also, uh, do not reinvent the wheel. Uh, take a stock of uh, available solutions, which can be delivered immediately. And, uh, you know, try to look at the low hanging fruits uh, to build the confidence. So if you go with the complicated thing to the farmer, uh, it will bounce back. Rather, you go with uh, some low hanging fruits and, and, and build the repo and then once farmer or somebody, any any partner, you know, get a confidence in you that yes, you are trying to you know do something and you are you are there to help. They will they will uh, do some complicated thing as uh, as well. So I think uh, the strategy should be should be uh, clear. Uh, test and validate what options has a single win, what options has a double win, and what option has a multiple win. And I think from the policy perspective, 
if uh, there is a single win versus the double win and needs the same investment i would i would recommend uh, you know policy planners to go for the double win option rather than the single win option so i think we have to keep our eyes and ears and you know uh, mouth open uh, to to tell them um demonstrate uh, how the solutions you are advocating are unusual i mean we have to we have to see the novelty of of what we are suggesting what value is being added over what is being done already so i think we uh, we we have to showcase otherwise you know we will end up with farmer is not listening farmer is not ad adopting yes we know that but we need to understand why i mean what is the novelty what is un vision is unusual in what we are recommending so i think those those are uh, you know why i'm i'm telling those things because there are a lot of lot of people uh, who who says yes all well but farmers are not adopting yes but do we know why they are not adopting so i think we understand those things i think we need to analyze and reanalyze i i underline it analyze and reanalyze what is what is critical for farmers what is critical for society and what is critical for governments individually and in tandem and once we understand these i think we can we can do a good job uh, but friends uh, many times we make the wrong comparison so whosoever want to have conservation agriculture based sustainable intensification they want to try it don't forget to capture the baseline for reference check otherwise year to year variation sometimes are uh, you know uh, uh, labeled with uh, you know with uh, with the conservation agriculture or with any new technology so i think reference check is something very important uh, so with this i guess i covered uh, i'm i'm on time uh, pawar sahab um, thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, since i have to uh, go to the another meeting so sir if there are any quick questions uh, uh, i can respond immediately or uh, you know later if somebody want to have detailed one uh, please note down my mail id it's m dot jart and it's there in the presentation as well m dot jart at cgir dot org i will be happy to respond your questions queries whatever concerns and uh, you know can talk or phone or whatever uh, i'm available thank you so much thank you dr jart i i think if you are leaving at least we can entertain one or two question from the participant sides only one or two question if any डॉक्टर प्लीज आंसर योर प्रेजेंटेशन या मैं कर रहा हूँ डॉक्टर सर सो एनी क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट यू इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ your voice is uh, now in echo mode na please see some more i think are there you know electronic device near to you so oh, thank you dr jat for your nice presentation and uh, for your uh, thank you so much sir uh, and uh, i'm sorry uh, colleagues i wanted to hear uh, your presentations and get myself in this but unfortunately i got another call uh, uh, you know uh, globally so i have to leave but uh, certainly i would like to uh, get uh, the copies of the presentations and uh, have a look later and uh, all the best uh, sarvan and uh, uh, shastri ji and madam uh, doing great job uh, in this uh, time and connecting people i think uh, you know it's always good to have uh, you know when our teachers sitting there and uh, there are several students who are talking so i think it's a great time thank you so much thank you dr sir so next thank you uh, dr jat is uh, me only so i will also try to finish it well in time yeah yeah uh, sir first i i read your bio data sir ah uh, first you will read okay you okay, okay, my bio data sir, sir. Uh, i read your bio data sir okay okay please go ahead Dr. S. Pawar, uh, director, uh, born during uh, 1961 in Haridwar district, Uttarakhand, working as a director ICR, uh, IIFSR, Modipuram, since January 2016, and uh, completed the PhD from CSS University, Meerut, UP. Prior to join at this uh, 
institute work as a senior scientist and principal scientist at icr uh, north east region meghalaya and contributed immensely to cause of improvement of farmers in hilly areas by way of uh, developing and identifying various alternative cropping and farming system option including organic farming practices the ifs model developed for hilly areas have been demonstrated in large uh, scale to farmers in remote and far plus area of north east region involving more than 10000 farmers as a director of icr ii fsr from 2016 17 to till date manage the uh, 22 number of institute project five number of externally funded project worth of 40 460 uh, lakh and two number of foreign aided project worth of uh, 52 lakh as a project coordinator of two major scheme of agronomy discipline a crop on integrated farming system with 74 centers in 25 states oblique union territories and all india coordinated project on organic farming with 20 centers in 16 states made uh, outstanding contribution by way of developing applied technology in the field of agronomy developed and documented 45 integrated farming system model across the country which are being replicated in different states uh, with financially out outlay of 1 to 6 crore from the state government around uh, 7040 uh, ifs model are being established in kerala which ifs model are popularized among the 10990 farmers in 34 districts of tamil nadu documented organic farming packages for 79 cropping systems and also working with farmers in more than 50 villages under mera gaon mera gorav program the farming system model established by the institute through a crop on integrated farming system have been highlighted to parliament and in the process of developing national mission on integrated farming system establish the infrastructure of more than 15 crores for icr i i fsr and a crop on integrated farming system organize the regional agriculture fair involving six states namely punjab haryana uh, up and uh, this jammu kashmir and uttarakhand in which more than 10000 farmers stakeholders have participated in this event in addition to two district level fair were also organized in mujapurnagar district in which around 5000 farmers participated and he has published more than 350 publication with including 75 research papers in reputed and peer review journal that is more than uh, six rating 15 books 58 book chapter then other monographs and other related research work then dr pawar is a recipient of 15 award including icr team research award fakhruddin ali ahmed award for improvement of tribal farming system besides he is fellow of four professional society serve as a member of various committees at national level which include futuristic crop planning for india empirical validation of sp and f mission monitoring committee for mission on uh, organic value chain development for nh region and pk vy visited international lab and organization in usa uh, netherland mexico and bangladesh and not taking much time i request uh, dr ak pawar sir to start your presentation on integrated organic farming system for north east india that's why we have uh, given the keynote on north east india because you have mostly work on north east india Uh, thank you dr haldar for your nice introduction about me and when we are talking about northeast it's not new i am a part of northeast india because i served more than 16 year in northeast region and most of the things which i learned and did in my research areas that was related to integrated farming system so after going through 
integrated farming system, then we started thinking of organic farming. Northeast more or less is a organic farming. People say it is by default, but I say it is by wisdom because I tried a lot and I tried to convince the farmer to apply at least urea, but they didn't agree. In spite of lots of temptations were given to them. So means somewhere they know the value of organic produce or the produce what they are having and what they are producing or consuming. So not taking much time in that direction, the organic farming, which is the soul right of Northeast India, how best we can implement the technology of organic production system. And first and foremost requirement is the nutrient management and under organic farming, we have to apply the nutrient through organic sources and the organic sources are the only FYN that is available with the farmers community. So what are the sources which can even supply the nutrient organically? That was the thought. And if we are having the livestock, why not to integrate those livestock with our farming practices that makes the system a integrated organic farming system. So because it is being done in the Northeast India, every figure is very well known to our colleague from Northeast India. And the change which is required nowadays in the process of producing more, more, more conventional system has changed. especially in valley areas. And if you see the example of uh, Assam, chemicals enter into the production system. Of course, Northeast Hill region still is having the chemicals which are at a negligible rate. So why we are needing the, the changes due to the paucity of labor, paucity of time, our system which is fragile and hill and mountain ecosystem making the machinery unavailability and their efficiency in the hill ecosystem. So we need small machinery which can make it dramatic change in our production system. So a lot of factors which govern why to change in the a systematic plan. So as a result of all these things what is happening? Vegetation we are losing, mechanization we are lacking because of heavy machinery. But nowadays, light machineries are also available that can be taken up. So the solution, every farmers, they are thinking, they are switching their mind and observing, is there any solution of the system, what the conventional system, whether it is organic, or whether it is chemical, what solution they have so that the production can be enhanced and wherever the chemical production has started, how we can again shift to our organic production system. So lots of solutions are there and addressing all these solutions, then we need to have a complete package of practices of the crops or cropping system which are available or which are prominent, which are promising in Northeast India, at least we should have the package of practices of the system. And integrating all these uh, organic farming practices with livestock and horticulture not only improve the food and nutritional security. If we say at regional level, I should say it is even at household level. You know, the average land holding site is only 0.6 hectare. If you see the efficiency, land use efficiency, that is only 40%. So more or less we have 0.38 hectare land that is efficiently being utilized. So under that system, we can or we should produce the food at least for the farming community which 
are surviving out that available land with that household community so under that situation so at least we should produce food on the farm itself or we generate the income which is sufficient to purchase the food item from the market so these two option if we work on that that we have to have the answer only that is the farming system so keeping all these things in view even in meghalaya we have developed farming system model based on land use based on the farming situations that is dairy based land use that agro pastoral based land use agri horti silvi pastoral based then agro foresty based and horti silvi based and finally integrated farming system <clears throat> so these are some of the uh, glimpses of uh, dairy based how they are economical and beneficial and environmental friendly to the farming community at household level even in meghalaya in all the state of hill region <clears throat> so silvi pastoral system if we talk about that is not meant for arable land this is for the hill of where the boulder size is big farmers are absent so we have even advocated that at least those type of farmers should adopt the silvi pastoral based land use system having the goats or poultry in that area and in the lower part or bottom part of that hill that we should have at least one water harvesting structure so that fish can also be produced over there and during the scarcity or during the demand at least we should have water available for at least irrigating the our uh, feed and fodder crops another options that uh, uh, poultry bird that is more more important one in that area and so poultry fish component should be a and still it is a component which is indispensable for not only improving the income but the food and nutritional security at household level and you know northeast india is divided into two hill ecosystem and valley ecosystem valley ecosystem we do have always water stagnated conditions or the saturation point is higher which does not allow any crop to grow in valley land areas so what are the options having if we wish to intensify that areas and we wish a diversification in that area we have to have the raised and sunken bed technology and by adopting this technology we can increase the cropping intensity even up to 400% and you know making of raised bed is not a simple task it involves huge money so that money has to be recovered from these raised bed by increasing the income by increasing the production and productivity per unit area and having all these things in mind at least we should have the intercropping system so that the system productivity can be enhanced in that area and those raised and sunken bed can be very well utilized for production of vegetable crops and the cost of production of, of these crops get minimized because raised beds does not require any application of water so that cost can be significantly reduced in that area and whatever the technology if we have developed that need to be demonstrated on the farmers field so that it can get in impact or it can even replace the traditional technology which is available with the farming community so that we can increase the income as well as productivity per unit area this is the field near nongpo in meghalaya where we had this farmer who was working with us on raised and sunken bed technology and his earning from a point 5 hectare area it was in lakhs not in thousands so when we talk about organic farming what change we need at least 
the conventional system has to be improved with the standard technology and we should have a certification regulatory mechanism whatsoever the farmers are producing at least it should get the premium price most of the time farmers they are making the complaint that we are not getting the premium price why because their product their produce is not certified so that needs a certification mechanism uh, and it is there when we are following organic standards we are adopting the scientific package of practices and above all we should have a market network until and unless it is there we cannot ensure the income of the farmers and having these approach in our mind as my a uh, friend dr ml jar talked about conservation agriculture that is first and foremost required requirement in northeast india even in imphal during uh, 14 to 16 i was there and i even visited uh, manipur i could see 400 hectare land was under zero till mustard that was the live example of conservation agriculture in the state of manipur growing of cover crop residue mulching crop diversification and when we are adopting all these approaches so finally we have to stick on integrated organic farming system <laughs> integrated organic farming system <clears throat> involving lots of component but i am i have chosen the pulse production of course the protein requirement in northeast india is met through uh, non veg diet but if we look into the cost of protein through uh, veg and non veg system you can very well see or imagine that through pulse production the protein cost can be minimized <clears throat> so we have to have this component in our farming system and you see we don't want to impose any pulses which are not traditionally grown in that area so lots of pulses are grown in that area even in, in the northeastern region these crop can be a part of our production plan and not only the pulses crop even in rajma lots of uh, french bean if they are dried their grain can also be used as rajma and it is also a part of their farming system <clears throat> program so why we are talking about the low income level in northeast il region because of prevalence of monocropping system if you see more or less the cropping intensity is lies between 120 to 150 so why why, why this is <coughs> happening because after harvest of rice most of the lands they remain fallow so earlier we were not having the technology of growing a second crop after harvest of rice but now a days we do have the technology of production of not only crops but vegetable as well as legume also so to we have under uh, standardized the technology of pulse production after rice in northeastern hill region and when we had included these uh, crops in our cropping system plan so you can very well see not only the uh, system productivity but gross as well as net return increase significantly so that can also be taken up when we are talking about the high moisture content in valley land area this is the fact it does not allow any crop to grow under water stagnated condition we could find out the solution of raised and sunken bed technology but where the moisture content is only higher than the saturation point we should make only a small flow like structure so that it can drain out the excess water as well as moisture from the field and we can grow the veg, uh, legume as well as vegetable in the standing stubbles of rice harvest 
and in this process we can make a only uh, or open a very small manual flow by using manual flow op uh, uh, opener we can open this and we can put the seed uh, inside that flow and then we can apply the fertilizer if it is we are talking about organic farming if we are talking about the conventional uh, then fertilizer can be applied under organic production system we can apply farmyard manure or vermi compost or other source of organic nutrient management you can see very well after harvest of rice with the stubbles uh, lentil can be successfully grown in entire northeastern hill as well as uh, valley land ecosystem another thing is that during the rainy season you see most of the time we do have rains so it does not allow any crop even to grow in terraces area so most of the areas are under either rice or maize so but we do have the land which is sufficiently and easily available between two terraces of rice that is the buns so these buns can be utilized for production of legume crop along with rice <clears throat> so integrated organic farming system so today integration is for better tomorrow so we have the thought in that way that we should have at least the slogan khet ka pani khet mein gaon ka pani gaon mein khet ki carbon khet mein gaon ki carbon gaon mein and if we follow this slogan so not only the income but the production can be ensured maximum per drop of available water in the area so in that situation we can very well say that integrated organic farming system it is the answer for food security financial security nutritional security as well as environmental security <clears throat> so having all these things we had developed two farming system model in northeast india so one iufs model for valley land it was 0.43 hectare and one for sloping land it was in one hectare area that was developed so we tried to uh, kept all these component which are essential for food and nutritional security like cereals pulses vegetable kitchen garden dairy unit fruit fisheries vermi compost fodder as well as hazro so all these component that needs to be integrated with each other then we can fulfill the objective of integrated organic farming system and inclusion of vegetable not only ensure the nutritional security but income enhancement at household level and you see one of the important and indispensable component is the farm own farm own not only serve in supplying the water for supplementary or complementary irrigation but it is a source of food in the form of fish production so these ponds are having dike or sloping areas so those sloping areas and dike can be very well utilized for the production of vegetable as well as fruits like uh citrus crop especially the assam lemon in that area so that it can increase the income of the farmer so when we had done this complete analysis of course it is uh, this appear so integrated organic farming system could give 1.65 lakhs per hectare net return whereas from farmer practice it was only 57000 so we can very well imagine that by adopting the integrated organic farming system we can double the income of the farmers within the stipulated time these are the nutrient requirement and how these nutrient requirement are being met on the farm itself through the heavy the dairy component having the component in that one 
when we talk about the food and nutritional security at household level at least we should know what is the requirement of food and nutritional security component so we had analyzed all the component and we turned that into the monetary and we could find out that 71000 rupees per annum is required for five member families of course this is the data of 2016 when i was there so <clears throat> means on an average rupees 15000 per person per annum is required so either we have to produce this kind of uh, crops at farm itself or we should generate the income so that these component can be purchased from the nearby areas or from the market so we have made the comparative assessment of those, uh, both these farming system model and we could find out this is the 71,000 rupees, this is the requirement of a family and we have a net income uh, from the model. So you can see after uh, in 0.43 hectare meter, uh, more or less the equal means after meeting the family requirement that household does not have sufficient money for their uh, social or other uh, needs. But having one hectare farming system model, they have sufficient amount of money for secondary uh, family requirement. <clears throat> so this is the one hectare model we had, had in uh, Meghalaya. So uh, we uh, allocated the area under cereals, then Culture crop, then fish pond, poultry, piggery, vermi compost, and threshing floor. Like that, we allocated the area and we did that analysis. And even we had utilized the pond dike for production of vegetables so that the maximum area or per unit area available with the farming community can be efficiently utilized. So, organic production system has to be made <coughs> uh, compulsory in the northeast uh, region to make the food and nutritional security at household level having this thing approach we can do it but for more production if household they are producing at least market requirement that is a big question so then we have to adopt the cluster approach and in that way group of farmer can be a cluster or village can be treated as a cluster. So IUFS cluster approach we had done in Minson village in Meghalaya. So we had worked out the component wise requirement, what is the cereal requirement, what is the pulse requirement, meat requirement. So all requirement in the village itself, it was produced and met at household level and remaining produce was sold in the market to market was facing a lot of problem in Shillong. They were having the demand of organic certification. So by that time that village does not have or did not have the organic certification. So that's why the organic outlet was opened in the national highway and they successfully sold out their access produce in that outlet. So, these are the requirements in that way. How we can, given the intervention, the crop diverse crops, livestock, then horticulture, then secondary agricultural practices, so that the income can be enhanced. And above all, first and foremost requirement is the capacity building. Until and unless we increase the knowledge status of the farmers, especially the farm women, because in the Northeast India, most of the work are being taken up by the women. So we have to increase their skill level so that the technology can be uh, proliferate in the villages also. And having all these things, how we have distributed these uh, uh, components like major crop, then pre creep crop in creep, rabi, fruit tree, vegetables, spices, all crops were allocated in that area. And you see, uh, Meghalaya 
it is known for highest uh, rainfall but during winter season there is no rain and even mohsin ram or chera punji they are known to be the wet desert so how we have to make this plan that at least at household level some water should be available so during the rainy season at least we tried that farmers should harvest minimum quantity of water so we made small water harvesting structure at least in 1000 farmers field the dimension was 5 meter 4 meter and 1.5 meter so this water was even utilized for their domestic purpose for the washing and drinking of livestock as well as production of uh, fish and vegetable in that area and in few farmers field azola was also grown and it was fed to their livestock especially in poultry and we could find out the poultry which were fed azola they produced uh, that was the grama birria they produced 135 to 140 eggs in one year and the grama birria which were provided only the feed material they could produce only 90 to 95 eggs per year so this much of drastic change with the feeding of azola was observed in meghalaya and that's why it was made popular on the farmers field and farmers taking advantage of it a lot of biomass is available in and around the villages or in and around the farm household that's why the community vermic compost units need to be established in the village itself and at the a uh, uh, farm house itself and when we are taking a village as a cluster or we have a group of farmers in a cluster so at least we should produce any commodity any time in bulk so that the buyer can be attracted we do have this much of production so that buyer can take in trucks so that's why we made a concept of community nursery the so community nursery was established in the villages and one or two farm family they were allowed to grow community nursery and they sold out the nursery plant to their fellow farmers in that area so they earned money in the, that process also and for all the village they earned money in in the terms of production of trucks loads of vegetable in that particular village they attracted the buyer buyers came into the village uh, having the truck load with them they purchased the vegetable and they took it to the market in guwahati as well as in kolkata <clears throat> fruit trees has also been taken up on large scale then pineapple pineapple is the principal crop on northeastern region but major setback is that most of the plantation is along the slopes so it is causing lots of soil erosion so we tried to convince and we had taken this task that at least the pineapple plantation should be taken up across the slope and we got success into that aspect also the entire village is having the pineapple that is across the slope now they could understand the benefit of planting the pineapple across the slope and in between these two rows of pineapple pulses are also being grown successfully then hazro <coughs> on terrace land hazros are also being encouraged so that it can act as a alley crop or it can enrich the soil fertility besides providing green leaf fodder for their goatry component or for their cow component <coughs> pig also an important component in farming system in northeast india meghalaya and mizoram it is a lovely animal every household like to have but if you see the example of meghalaya khasi pig attain only 25 to 35 kg in one year so we try to introduce yorkshire they adopted it and they could even harvest 80 to 100 kg weight within 270 days but what was the problem problem came with the test of this uh, 
Yorkshire. Then we have improved the Khasi pig by crossing Khasi pig with Yorkshire. And this is an excellent breed in the Meghalaya and every farmers, they like to rear that cross bread. And it is attaining the weight of 60 to 80 kg in 275 days. So this way, the farmers' incomes can also be increased or food and nutritional can also be increased by having piggery as well as poultry component in the backyard of the household. As I told you earlier, uh, near the national highway, this is the outlet and most of the produce are being sold here to villagers, especially girls, they are engaged, they are taking the produce of each and every household, those who want to sell, they are selling it and they are uh, they have fixed a certain commission on that. So this way they are getting the employment in that outlet. So that is an exam example. Lots of problem when we had introduced the integrated organic farming system. Uh, these uh, problems we encountered, we faced, but we could overcome all these problems so that it could be uh, easily uh, taken up to the farmer's field. And now it is the example, not only mentioned two more villages, they entered into our agreement and they told that we don't need any financial support from ICR side, only we want the technology. It means when the technology is sound, so there is no problem of its percolation. So this way it opens up the scope as well as prospect in organic farming in especially in northeast india whatever are the sort analysis of having the integrated organic farming system we had also done that and in conclusion we can say that integrated organic farming system not only ensure the food security but it has a negative in impact on environment besides it is now fetching the premium premium price and the popularity in Northeast India. So with this, I conclude my uh, talk and I do believe it must have opened up some of the scopes uh, in the eyes of our participants. If they have any queries, I will be happy to share one or two questions because we have to go another presentations also. With this, I thank you very much for your patience uh, hearing. Hello, sir. Just a minute. Doctor A.S. Banwar, Director IFSR. Uh, sir, you have presented a very excellent uh, presentation, particularly for the Northeast in, in India through integrated organic farming. How the farmers of Manipur, particularly hill sector, valley sector, can be increased, and how their economic sector can be increased in Northeast, and uh, how the practice of organic farming, uh, our methodology, particularly to slope land and with different intervention with the theme that gaon ka pani gaon mein aur khet ka pani khet mein aur khet ka carbon khet mein aur gaon ka carbon gaon pe so with this uh, you have uh, given a brief about the development of zalkuns in particularly in meghalaya in northeast and then uh, how the uh, slow land farming uh, and uh, they will adopt the organic shows, farming uh, composting, and then uh, pig rearing in integrated way so that the uh, component or animal component as well as crop components they can integrate organically and diversification of crops also. So thank you, sir, very much for your well speech, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next session, it, it, uh, we will start. Ah, yes, uh, Dr. Sarantham, thank you for your nice word and uh, summarizing my talk. 
so without wasting much time we will be entering into another presentation uh, uh, whether all the presenters are dr lalchan yes sir uh, dr arya dr m surbala devi then dr b lal dr s sahu yes sir dr priyanka dr bhavna saran and uh, dr c tanya yes sir present and dr t basanta singh is there 1 2 3 so we have five presentation so whatever the time allocated i think that will be sufficient for each presentation and uh, i do believe you will uh, convey the message of your topic to the audience in a befitted manner but at the same time since i am here this is my bonded responsibility to see all the youngster are here to present so i would like to give you one training that you have to be very specific to the timing also means if your talk is less than 8 minute so something will be not good for you if your talk is exceeding 10 minute then again okay so between 8 to 10 minutes slot is with you so be specific to that one and i will request my colleague dr n subhas he is my colleague he is principal scientist looking after agro meteorology in my institute so he will take care of the time also so now i request dr lal chan uh oh lal chan malo was not here dr bana dr aris sir lal chan malo is here lal chan malo Dr. Lanjan, please. Yes, sir. Respected chairman, co-chairman, uh, repeaters of the session, distinguished scientists, uh, and my colleagues. Good afternoon to all of you. I, Lanjan Malo, presenting here uh, the work entitled "Impact of Particulate Matter Deposition on Biochemical Parameters of the Plant." So now come to the topic. Am I audible, sir? Am I audible? Audible. Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, you are audible. Continue. Okay. Impact of particulate matter deposition on biochemical parameters of the plants. As we all know, in current scenario, rapid industri industrialization, uh, urbanization, growing of industries, population hike. There are several major reasons reasons behind the our environmental changes, or uh, they create uh, many uh, environmental problems. out of these air pollution is a burning issue we all know and we also discuss uh, this uh, uh, air pollution issue at the time of residue burning in winters and in now in covid 19 19 pandemic issue also the air pollution emitted uh, from both sources like natural sources and anthropogenic, anthropogenic sources anthropogenic sources uh, out out of anthropogenic sources energy sec uh, sector is the prime cause but we generally discuss about the air pollutants uh, effects on the health issue like uh, at the time of residue burning we discuss uh, that uh, in breathing problem but uh, there is another uh, uh, impact or uh, impact of uh, air pollutants on the crops or different plant species uh, so i am here to discuss the the their the, the different particulate matter deposition or air pollutants on different plant component or so there are you all know there are several primary and secondary air pollutants like sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide particulate matter and uh, ozone and so on and uh, out of that particulate matter or dust deposition is one one important parameter uh, uh, out of uh, six criteria pollutant criteria pollutants means uh, they have national standards or they have more uh, damaging in nature so uh, for that research uh, we conducted this research our summer season uh, of the 2018 19 at the center for environmental science and climate resilient agriculture ira new delhi for this uh, we selected three site near to road site in agriculture field or near to official building to see the uh, different uh, scenario of air pollution and for uh, different uh, plant species we can go for similar type of plant species at all the sites uh, we selected 
uh, on the basis of liter literature or on the basis of leaf capturing dust deposition capacity of the different plants five plants were selected in the study like ficus bengalensis terminalia arjuna azadi sakta indica uh, saraka asoka mangifera indica this is the meteorological information of the study area and it, at that time uh, maximum wind direction northwest to west <coughs> and this study is summer season of the 2018-19 we measure particulate matter deposition with the help of respirable but dust sampler in respirable dust sampler we put a quad filter uh, you can see filter paper before deposition and after the deposition this uh, filter paper uh, particulate matter deposition on the filter paper uh, after the weight difference and divided by air uh, volume we can calculate the particulate matter deposition after the particulate matter deposition we also calculate uh, at three side uh, gra uh, dust deposition with the method of gravimetry we, we we put the three trays or trays at uh, all the sides in different weekly interval and uh, after the uh, gravimetric method we calculate dust deposition and we also calculate uh, major sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide ozone uh, with different methods like improved west geiger methods and it's following uh, on the spectrophotometer so sulfur dioxide was measured 540 nanometer nitrogen 516 nanometer and ozone uh, uh, ozone is measured uh, on uh, another an uh, wavelength so on the results concluded that Uh, if we when we calculate uh, weekly average for uh, summer season 3 months weekly average of dust flux on soil selected site we can generally found that road side due to vehicular pollution or uh, poor conditions of road and uh, diesel vehicles and so many other pollution uh, road side is maximum uh, dust deposition but not uh, not always that road side have uh, maximum deposition sometimes due to wind speed or due to agriculture operations agriculture sites also uh, found the dust uh, dust dust flux uh, higher than road deposition but the official site uh, always uh, less minimum minimum dust deposition now come to the different pollution uh, concentration uh, nitrous uh, ozone uh, ozone nitrous and dioxide sulfur dioxide and pm10 all the pollutants are maximum at road side followed by agriculture field and then official area but uh, the uh, um, the nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide and ozone are the uh, maximum at road side followed by official area due to the vehicular uh, movement in the official area but less vehicular uh, movement at agriculture field side now we can uh, we also calculate the dust deposition on crop canopy for that we take the sampling uh, from particular height from the all the trees and different uh, time level and we calculate the uh, uh, particulate matter deposition on a crop canopy by the method of prosti et al in this method we take the samples from, uh, from the uh, from the tree and uh, we wash the uh, we wash the all the particulate matter with the uh, 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 water means distilled water and we take same uh, weight of the beaker before and after and after divide the uh, area of the can uh, means leaves so result show that road side trees at the road side all plants uh, have all plant leaves have so high deposition followed by uh, agriculture pen and official pen and on the uh, when we go for particular tree terminalia arjuna uh, have highest uh, deposition uh, due to the uh, i think due, uh, it may be due to the its leaf structure or uh, its leaves uh, is Leaf, leaf orientation on the plant tree. After that, we calculate uh, the total chlorophyll content and proline content on the, by the standard methods. So these results show that uh, results show that roadside uh, total chlorophyll content uh, decrease by the when the dust fall or dust deposition increase uh, all the tree species and proline content. Uh, as we all and all, all know that proline content and ascorbic acid content are the uh, means. Uh, <clears throat> stress indicator means their concentration increases when the any stress uh, in environment increases so you uh, can all uh, you can see the, uh, that then proline content at road side are maximum due to the uh, to, because there is pollution level or po uh, air pollution stress is more you can simply compare in uh, the graphical representation whereas if you total chlorophyll content uh, road side uh, road side minimum Uh, and uh, at official side maximum and uh, total uh, uh, means aerial deposition uh, is contradictory means uh, <coughs> where is where uh, maximum pollution there is 
simply decrease in total chlorophyll content but when we discuss about the proline content proline content is nothing but that it is i already told that this is uh, indicator good indicator of uh, stress indicator so on the basis of that uh, at the when whenever terminally arjuna uh, we can see that road side uh, maximum deposition but uh, we uh, maximum deposition or maximum pollution concentration load but the uh, proline content was also maximum uh, at road side or most polluted side so most polluted side means uh, pro uh, uh, pollutant uh, concentration was increased with that proline also uh, so uh, uh, indicator so now come to the conclusion of this uh, <coughs> work concentration of air pollutants like pm10 so2 nitrogen dioxide and ozone was higher at road side as compared to agricultural official site that aerial deposition was maximum at terminally arjuna uh, plant leaves and maximum minimum at saraka asoka as most polluted site this is probably due to their foliar arrangement or surface characteristic of arjuna plant the level of chlorophyll was decreased while the level of proline amino acid which are considered a stress indicator have increased with increased the dust fall plus at three side so <clears throat> after that in this research we can simply uh, put a more focus on the uh, means forestry or uh, roadside plant tree plantation and uh, so uh, after that if we do some uh, further in the in this work we can uh, go in future with the further uh, uh, different parameters calculation and uh, we if we if we measure air pollution tolerance index then we find out which uh, plant is more tolerant than air polluted and then we can suggest Uh, the which uh, which tree plant is suitable for roadside and which uh, tree plant or different uh, uh, um, means air pollution uh, and stress condition thank you thank you so much thank you dr lalchan for your nice presentation thank you sir uh, we take uh, the question in the last so all uh, participants are requested to note down whatever they wish to discuss with uh, dr uh, lal chand so now dr bana uh, rs bana ji please thank you sir thank you very much uh, uh, respected dr as kumar sahab director indian institute of farming system research modi puram merit dr indra sarantham dean college of agriculture uh, my guru dr evd sastri sir professor at cau impal i'll be speaking on Uh, developing uh, residue management protocol for conservation agriculture based rice rice wheat system for sustainable crop and water productivity and carbon sequestration and uh, it is a modeling study so epsim model was used in this study uh, edge you are aware and uh, dr ml jart sir has discussed in his presentation he made my things easy so i hope that i'll uh, complete my things before 10 minutes because uh, he introduced the subject but uh, Uh, since uh, rice wheat system is the backbone of our food security and uh, covers uh, entire endogangetic plants i would say so it is the basis of indian agriculture but if we see during the recent past since past two decades or so this cropping system is showing the sign of fatigue it is uh, maybe because of the continuous use of traditional practices same serial serial rotation and most of the uh, the scientific uh, uh, reports now coming the literature says that yield is at stagnation the if you see the nutrient status earlier there were uh, there used to be one or two nutrients deficient but now there are so many nutrients which are deficient in different locations of endogangetic plants if if we talk about this rice wheat hot spots and then depletion of ground water environmental pollution of course because of the large scale residue burning and because of the methane emissions and emissions of other gases from rice wheat system and uh, as dr ml was mentioning the shortage of labor so that is also is going to be a serious issue in this uh, particular cropping system so now the question arises what to do what is the next step so how can like be, because this is the backbone and how can we ensure our food security while maintaining our soils or environment uh, so answer lies somewhere here 
with the other adaptation strategies conservation agriculture which involves minimum disturbance of soil residue cover and crop diversification can be a good potential strategy to overcome some of those problems uh, and uh, if if you see the uh, national agricultural research systems achievement during past decade or so we can observe that so many uh, trials research trials are being done now in uh, by by icr system by universities cimet iri and other international organizations but long term effect the those trials are uh, most of the trials are medium terms long term effects and uh, the information on that is not available what will happen if we practice conservation agriculture for several decades so those informations are lacking so effect of those uh, ca practices on resource use efficiency productivity uh, kind of things and optimum quantity of residue which is no, not available for us uh what opti- uh, what residue level will be optimum for long term conservation agriculture so keeping these things in mind we carried out uh, uh, this uh, modeling study for, uh, and we run the model uh, for 31 years of the data uh, and uh, coming to the calibration part apsim model agriculture production system simulation model was uh, used for the study which is uh, good robust model even for south asian conditions and uh, several reports are there that model is working well in these conditions and we we calibrated rice variety of this uh, region pusa 1121 and then wheat variety sd2851 so adjusting several parameters which is given below some phenological parameters and soil parameters uh, we calibrated the model uh, for delhi conditions and then we validated we did some sensitivity analysis for various soil related parameter crop related parameter and the graph before you is on the biomass and yield parameters so we validated for 2 uh, years uh, and then we run the model for uh, 31 years and based on a rapid survey with the farmers we found Uh, some of the popular residue management protocols we call them we called them scenarios uh, and we compared this with the uh, look look at uh, six the farmers practice city scenario conventional tillage puddle transplanted rice for zero conventional till wheat with the five uh, conservation agriculture scenarios that is uh, scenario 1 is nr no residues were retained but jtr uh, zero tillage Uh, D- dsr followed by zt wheat was followed in the second low residue only rice residues were retained in wheat but no residues were retained in rice crop in third 30 30 of both the crops for scenario 30 uh, percent residues of uh, wheat in rice and 60 percent residues of rice in wheat uh, l- likewise higher residue retained then 100% rice residues were retained and 30 wheat residues were retained uh, so coming to the result uh, we can see here that a higher residue level was found best treatment but if we uh, compare the conventional tillage during even after long term conservation agriculture adoptions in some of the years ct is still good but if we see some bad years quite stable in the uh, systems where uh, sufficient amount of residues were retained so this shows that though th- there is no long term if we adopt the ca for long term there is no yield penalty as such if we retain sufficient amount of residue but during the worst years when the rainfall is less monsoon fails in those years ca is far far better than conventional till similarly gives more clear picture here conventional tillage uh, is better than high and medium residue and lower residue treatments but 
during the uh, worst years lo lower 40% years you can see hmr is better than conventional tillage and the worst 10% years if you if you compare then conventional tillage results in poor system productivity as compared to most of the even the lower residue treatments uh, so based on this we uh, analyzed the optima of residue levels so it was found that uh, uh, hmr gives highest uh, sustainable yield index sustainable value index and the polynomial optima was year is optimum for rice wheat system in terms of uh, sustainability this is the effect on soil uh, microbial uh, biomass carbon biomass nitrogen so here also it is showing that conservation agriculture systems are better uh, than uh, conventional tillage and ca uh, conventional tillage and the ca without residue is almost at par in most of the years uh, likewise the the uh, conservation agriculture as compared to conventional tillage and this is the carbon sequestration rate uh, so carbon sequestration rate was around uh, 225 kg to 375 kg per hectare if we retain if we go for hmr and hr scenario through conservation agriculture uh, so sufficient amount of uh, carbon we can sequester if we switch over this is the effect on water productivity yes definitely water is import, uh, important component uh, and uh, now uh, the, uh, the uh, everyone is talking about uh, water productivity so in water productivity terms also uh, uh, the the median uh, water productivity we can see the, it was highest when we retain higher amount of residue high hr scenario we can call it and uh, it was uh, almost equivalent to the conventional tillage when we go for HMR scenario, but median was better uh, again in con uh, conservation agriculture. Like system uh, returns also, net returns also, we, if we see then CA is nowhere behind the conventional tillage and uh, based on these findings conclude that yes, long term conservation agriculture in rice wheat cropping system definitely announces crop productivity, water productivity, net returns and carbon sequestration. Uh, and the system productivity and system water productivity, both were more under conservation agriculture and during unfavorable monsoon seasons, we get good yields, stable yield, CA gives more stable yield uh, over the years. And residue retention led to more carbon sequestration compared to residual removal under zero tillage as well as under tilled conditions and at the end uh, high residue and high and medium residue scenarios were found economically more profitable and 7.6 ton per hectare per year residue load, load was found optimum so these these are the findings in brief thank you very much thank you dr rajesh banaji for your nice presentation uh, you, uh, next uh, presenter is Dr. Ann Supala Devi. Uh, sir, uh, I'm uh, present here. Uh, 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 hear your presentation. Sir, okay. uh, Dr. Bana, sir, please uh, close your slide. Uh, close, madam. Close, okay, thank you, sir. Not unfair. Cannot start. Hold on, sir. It's you open or that. RS Bana, unfair. You are Bana, you should be. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 
ओके सर यू शेयर योर प्रेजेंटेशन yes i am sharing uh. sir is it visible now you are visible as well as audible so please okay okay sir so good afternoon respected uh, chairman co chairman and our fellow participants today i am uh, going to present my research uh, work on the topic nitrogen transformation in a typic haplo umbrat soil amended with organic manure and humic acid so we all know that nitrogen is one of the most important micronutrients required by plant for growth and different metabolic activities and ultimately it will enhance the crop yield which is the main and the last objective of of every agriculturist and in the soil nitrogen is present in both organic and inorganic form though in the inorganic form only about 2% is present and remaining are in organic form and uh, whenever as a farmer or as a researcher whenever we are doing any research work or whenever we want to apply nitrogen we can apply either in the form of organic or inorganic sources and uh, after application in the soil this nitrogen forms will be converted from one form to another and that was we generally called as the nitrogen transformation and uh, nitrogen is also an essential component of amino acids and uh, amino acid present in uh, amino acids are present in humic acid and this humic acid is the major constituent of humic substances and integral part of the organic matter and in the humic acid nitrogen is contain about 1 to 5% depending on its origin and sources of the organic matter and the several researchers have found out that nitrogen present in humus can serve as a slow release nitrogen fertilizer mm -hmm. and not only this application of humic acids was found to increase the total amount of nitrogen contained in different plants so objective of the research work are in this first one to study the effect of organic manures and humic acid extracted from the corresponding organic manures on nitrogen transformation in a typic haplo umbrat soil and second objective is that to study the effect of the organic manures and those humic acid extracted on the yield of chickpea variety jz116 which is taken as a test crop so in the the experiment was a pot experiment which is conducted in the college of agriculture cm far and design is simple uh, complete randomized block design and the test crop already told it is cp variety z and um, uh, sampling was done uh, by destructive sampling method and um, all together there were we have uh, maintained 180 pots so that were and the sampling days was there done at 20 days interval like uh, six sampling days were there like 0 20 60 80 and uh, at the time of harvest here the table shows the general characteristics of the soil used in the experiment the soil was clay in texture having acidic uh, ph and the organic matter content is higher however available nitrogen contained in the soil comes in the low category and available phosphorus also low and in case of available potassium it is high in content so here the slide shows the different treatment combination for uh, organizing this uh, different treatments we have prepared four organic manures that is vermeer manure compost vermi compost and a nitrogen enriched compost and from these organic manures we extracted humic acid following the method of this prevention 1996 and uh, recommended dose of nitrogen was applied based on the nitrogen recommended for the chickpea that is 20 kg per hectare so like this different company uh, different uh, nitrogen sources were applied based on the recommended dose of nitrogen and here shows the results of the research work so first is the exchangeable ammonia it is one of the inorganic form of nitrogen here the graph shows that the when organic matters are applied in the soil the trend of changes it is showing like this it declined up to 20 days then increased slightly up to 60 days 
then again decline at harvest. However, in case of the system where these or humic acids, different humic acid sources are applied, the exchangeable form of nitrogen decline up to 40 days, then increase up to 80 days, and at last, that is at the time of harvest, it decline again. And um, application of the uh, this different sources of organic manure enhance the accumulation of the exchangeable ammonia as compared to the untreated control. And the comparing with the organic manure and humic acid treated system, it is observed that higher accumulation of exchangeable ammonia was observed in the organic manure treated system over the uh, humic acid treated system. This shows the uh, higher rate of mineralization of the organic manure as compared to the humic acid. Next, this is about the soluble changes or trend of changes of the soluble nitrate content. And here, the trend shows that the, uh, here also uh, in the previous, just like the previous one, application of the nitrogen sources enhance the accumulation of the soluble nitrate nitrogen in the soil system. And uh, here, in case of the humic acid treated system, the soluble nitrate nitrogen increase up to 20 days then followed by a decline up to 80 days, and finally, slight uh, increase was showing up uh, to harvest. However, here also a different, slight different trend is uh, uh, showing by the organic manure treated system. Here, it shows the increasing trend up to 20 days, but decline up to 40, followed by increase, again increase up to 60, then again, it is followed by a decline up to 80 days, and finally, it increases. And similarly, in this case also, application of the organic manure, so higher accumulation of this soluble nitrate form as compared to the corresponding humic acid treated system. And uh, among the different organic manures, application of farmyard manure, it uh, accumulates higher nitro uh, nitrate nitrogen content in the soil. Here, it shows the total hydrolyzable organic form. This is an organic form of nitrogen. And uh, with time or with different stages of the crop growth, it is showing a declining trend. This shows that, uh, this, this shows that we can use this, uh, from this organic matter, organic form of nitrogen, nitrogen get mineralized and released and uh, it is used by plant uptake for the uh, plant uptake. Means that means it, is, it get mineralized and uh, come to the available form so that plant can easily uptake it. However, sub decline was observed in case of the, uh, uh, this one, organic matter treated system as compared to the humic acid treated system. And um, among the, um, among comparing among the two set of the organic manure, we can, we can find out that humic acid, higher accumulation of this total hydrolyzable form of nitrogen was observed in the humic acid treated system over the organic matter, mainly at the final stages. And this shows the more recalcitrant nature of the humic acid. And the next is the non-hydrolyzable organic nitrogen form. And here the trend shows that the non-hydrolyzable organic, nitro, uh, non organic nitrogen increase up to 40 days, followed by a decline up to harvest. So the increase in the non-hydrolyzable organic form and uh, decline in the uh, hydrolyzable form shows that these two forms of organic nitrogen are also interconvertible. And uh, uh, we can also further, we can observe that humic acid applied system accumulate higher amount of this non-hydrolyzable organic nitrogen uh, than, the, uh, than the organic matters uh, treated system at the, mainly at the last stages of the crop growth. Here, the trend of changes in the total nitrogen is showing, and uh, with the uh, advancement of the crop growth, it is declining gradually up to harvest. And, um, but however, here also, total nitrogen content accumulation was more in the humic acid treated system as compared to the organic matter treated system. This shows what? This shows the slower release of nitrogen from humic acid than organic matter and the building of a higher content of the total nitrogen in the soil. Here, this is the last part of the, this is about the yield effect of those uh, treatments on the yield parameter that is pot weight. 
and it is showing that the application of the nitrogen sources either through organic inorganic form or organic sources we can see easily see, see that because of the application of the organic uh, application of nitrogen yield is significantly higher than the untreated control where there is no application of the nitrogen source and among the different organic sources, we can find that the organic manure, pure organic manure application uh, show higher yield than the humic acid treated soil system. And among the organic manures, we can find that the FYM applied system, that is T3, so significantly higher yield as compared to the remaining sources. So we can, I can conclude here like a significantly higher amount of extensively ammonia, soluble nitrate, and yield were observed in soil treated with organic manure as compared to the corresponding humic acid. However, total hydrolyzable organic nitrogen, total nitrogen, and non-hydrolyzable nitrogen accumulates were accumulated more in humic acid amended soil than organic manure. And irrespective of different treatments, Total nitrogen and total hydrolyzable organic nitrogen gradually decline till harvest comparing with the initial value. And the organic manures mineralize at faster rate with higher agronomic efficiency comparing with the corresponding humic acid. And uh, among the different organic manures, we can conclude that farmyard manure application applied system so uh, faster mineralization as well as the uh, higher crop yield. Here I wind up my presentation. Thank you for patient hearing. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Surbala Devi, yes. for your nice presentation. Okay, sir. I have taken two minutes more. Uh, okay. Now, our next okay. presenter, Dr. B. Lal from Avikanagar. B. Lal is not there, sir. Oh, okay. Then Dr. S. Sahu. Is yes, there. sir. Yes, uh, sir. You, uh, you please uh, share your presentation. A very good afternoon uh, to respected chairman, co chairman, dignitaries, and member of organizing committee, and all the participants. My name is Samuresh Sahu. PhD Research Scholar of Uttar Bhavan Kishi Vishwavidyalay, Pundi Bari Kojbihar. And my research topic is effect of irrigation and nitrogen management on distribution of nitrate nitrogen in soil profile, plant nitrogen uptake, nitrogen use efficiencies, and yield of wheat crop. The main challenges in agriculture nowadays, enhancing production, productivity, and quality improvement, resource conservation, and resilient agriculture adapt to climatic variability and mitigation of climate change. Opportunity to augmenting production and productivity of wheat crop in Terai agroecological region of West Bengal. Terai region of West Bengal provides high potential for increasing production and productivity of wheat crop. Prolonged winter season, high residual soil water and high water table, relatively less irrigation water requirement for posters enhancing wheat productivity in this Terai agroecological region. Against this backdrop, present investigation was undertaken to study the effects of irrigation water and nitrogen application rates on status and distribution of nitrate nitrogen in soil profile and to assess the effects of irrigation water and nitrogen application rates on yield, nitrogen uptake, and nitrogen use efficiencies by wheat crop. To evaluate irrigation water productivity under the influence of different irrigation and nitrogen levels. That's the experimental site are the UBKB research farm, Pundibari. Okay, Dr. Soil. Everybody yes. can read it. You speak whatever you want to share the information, okay? Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, the four level, levels of irrigation, I0, I1, I2, I3, that are main plot and different level of nitrogen are in subplot that uh, I0 is control plot and I1 that is 120, 122 millimeter and uh, 263 millimeter and 186 millimeter of irrigation water. And th that's the table shown that physicochemical characteristics of field soil. And that is, a, that is the meteorological information of the experimental site, the maximum and minimum temperature during the crop growth period and uh, right side uh, picture showed that the monthly rainfall during the crop growth period. 
and the soil water distribution in soil profile the soil water percentage varied from 34.30% to 34.54% within 0 to 100 cm soil profile maximum percentage of soil water was recorded in 30 to 60 cm depth that is 34.54% and soil water varied significantly with different irrigation treatments at proper mist stage highest soil water depletion was noted in 15 to 30 cm soil depth that is 27.92% and at the subsequent soil depth soil water content between sowing and harvesting stage follows followed almost an uniform pattern and distribution of nitrate nitrogen in soil profile at crop harvest in both the years relatively low concentration of nitrate nitrogen at 15 to 30 semi soil layers corroborates its maximum absorption by the root system from this soil layer at lower soil depth nitrate nitrogen concentration was almost followed a uniform pattern which implies vertical movement of soluble nitrate nitrogen through the soil layers effect on grain yield and dry matter yield there significantly affected the different level of irrigation and nitrogen highest grain yield was recorded 4.26 megagram per hectare in i3 n2 treatment that that implies 380 386 millimeter irrigation water and 120 kg nitrogen per hectare recorded good result an effect of total nitrogen uptake highest total nitrogen uptake was obtained due to combined influence of 386 millimeter irrigation water and 150 kg nitrogen per hectare that is uh, i3 n3 and the lowest plant nitrogen uptake was at i1 n3 that is 127 millimeter irrigation water with com combination with uh, 150 kg nitrogen per hectare <coughs> effect on nit nitrogen use efficiencies agronomic efficiencies and physiological efficiencies Higher the level of irrigation water, that is 386 millimeter irrigation water, higher was the agronomic efficiency value. But in case of physiological efficiency, level of irrigation water had no direct effect on this. Effect on apparent nitrogen recovery. Apparent nitrogen recovery varied significantly among the treatments, increasing the nitrogen fertilizer level from 60 kg nitrogen to uh, nitrogen per hectare to 150 kg nitrogen per hectare decrease the ARN that that means apparent nitrogen recovery values irrespective of irrigation water application further increase nitrogen level at 120 kg per hectare and uh, 150 kg per hectare drastically reduce the apparent nitrogen recovery value ranging from 33 to 23 percent effect of irrigation water irrigation water productivity Nitrogen fertilizer and irrigation showed a significant interaction on irrigation water productivity. Highest irrigation water productivity was obtained by the combination of lowest irrigation and highest level of level followed by I1N1 and I2N2. Conclusion result indicated that 263 millimeter irrigation water and 120 kg nitrogen per hectare was the best treatment combination in achieving highest grain yield higher nitrogen uptake and improved nitrogen use efficiencies. Application of nitrogen fertilizer up to 150 kg per hectare under irrigated situation with 386 millimeter water use maintain the nitrate nitrogen concentration in soil profile. That is the safe level. Uh, as we know, 10 milligram per liter is the safe level for human consumption. Rational use for, of irrigation water along with judicious nitrogen fertilizer application can save and unnecessary irrigation water use by enhancing irrigation water productivity and nitrogen use efficiencies. And that's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Shahu. Our next presenter is Priyanka Gautam from Bikaner. Priyanka, not there. Not there, not there. Next. Then, Bhavna Saran is also not there. Then oh, no, is there, sir. Is there? Yeah, yeah. No, we have not heard her. Dr. Bhavna Saran, yes. Dr. Bhavna Saran, you please speak out. Bhavna Saran. 
Uh, okay, so you give next, then after the new marriage. We will see her in the next, then Dr. C. Tanya, the Manipur Center, ICR. Present, sir. Present, present sir. Present. Ah, please. You share your presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So is it visible? Uh, no, uh, now it is visible. Okay. A very good afternoon, Chairman, Sir, Co-Chairman, uh, and all the participants present today. Uh, today I'm going to speak on the topic, uh, role of potassium and nitrogen on growth yield and quality of turmeric cultivar suranjana under alluvial plains of West Bengal. So turmeric is, as we know, so that it is... Going PowerPoint mode. Pardon? PowerPoint mode. Okay, okay. Ah. Slide so, no, sir. Mm -hmm. So is it vis is visible? Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, okay. Uh, the, so turmeric is known as the golden spice as well as spice of life. And it, it is very one of the most important ancient medicinal spice also you, used, man, uh, used for medicinal purpose also. And India is the world's largest producer and exporter of turmeric with export of uh, US dollar 236 million in 2018. So it is popular in Vedic times because of its unique properties, color, flavor, and as medicine in Ayurveda, besides its use as cosmetic and has significance in religious ceremonies and auspicious occasion. So the demand of turmeric also increased all over the world as new ingredient of therapeutic and life-saving properties were discovered. And the curcumin contained in turmeric, it has a very high antioxidant and used for curing uh, cancer. Uh, turmeric is a major spice in which maximum number of products has been patented. So it, it is a heavy feeder, feeder of nitrogen and potassium nutrient, but the uptake of potassium is comparatively higher than nitrogen. So information on the nutritional requirement is meager, particularly potassium and nitrogen in this crop. So by taking this background, I have taken up this experiment. The soil type of the experimental site is typical Gangetic alluvial soil. The design is two-factor factorial RBD. Variety is Suranjana and number of treatment is eight. Re replicated tries. Then uh, plot size is 1.5 into 1.5 with a spacing of 25 into 30 centimeter. So these are the treatment combination. Treatment one comprise of potassium at uh, K2 at 80 kg per hectare along with uh, nitrogen single spray that is 2% uh, as uh, nitrogen as urea. Then uh, likewise treatment two consists of uh, 120 kg plus uh, nitrogen single spray. Then T3 160 kg plus single spray. T T4 200 kg plus nitrogen single spray. T5 consists of 80 kg plus nitrogen double spray, then T6 120 plus double spray, T7 160 plus nitrogen double spray, and T8 one, 200 kg uh, potassium plus nitrogen uh, double spray. And the spray schedule was, uh, first spray was given 90 days after planting, second spray was given 90 and 120 days after planting. So these are the, some, uh, growth parameters. Uh, plant height was found to be maximum when applied when uh, uh, was found to be maximum with treatment eight that is um, potassium once over 200 kg along with uh, the um, double spray of uh, nitrogen that is two percent. Then number of dealers also found to be uh, maximum uh, with this treatment that is 3.23 number of leaves also 18.48 but leaf length was found maximum with the uh, single spray uh, along with uh, K2O uh, for 200 kg per hectare. 
Uh, these are the uh, yield parameter and uh, yield and quality uh, parameters. The uh, number of mother rhizome uh, also found to be maximum with the treatment aid uh, that is a one two hundred kg potassium plus uh, along with uh, two uh, two percent nitrogen double spray. So number of primary finger also found to be maximum that is 8.60. Then number of secondary finger also was found to be maximum that is 21.04. And yield, projected yield per hectare also found to be maximum with this treatment 36.82. And oleo resin content of 10.5 also found with this treatment. But however, the curcumin content uh, was found highest, that is 6.79, with uh, highest dose of potassium and uh, along with single spray of nitrogen. Uh, this is the economic analysis, uh, that is the highest BC ratio was obtained with treatment uh, potassium 200 kg along with uh, nitrogen uh, double spray, 2% nitrogen double spray that is 3.14 uh, and uh, followed by uh, nitrogen single spray along with uh, potassium 200 kg per hectare that is 2.95. So, uh, coming to the conclusion, the application of K2O at 200 kg per hectare plus nitrogen 2% double spray was proved most effective by influencing different growth parameters, a yield, yield component, and also quality constituent of cultivar, uh, turmeric cultivar suranjana. Yeah. Curcumin contain increase with the increase in nutrient that is potassium and nitrogen up to a certain level, but more increase with the level of nutrient could not increase further in the container of curcumin. The, the benefit cost ratio was maximum with treatment uh, eight, that is uh, potassium 200 kg along with 2% nitrogen spray, followed by nitrogen single spray along with K2O 200 kg while the lowest was obtained with nitrogen single spray along with 80 kg of potassium. So considering the benefit cost ratio, the treatment combination that is potassium uh, 200 kg along with nitrogen double spray may be practiced for achieving maximum benefit with respect to yield and quality as also income of the farmers. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now, Dr. Basanta Singh. Dr. Tanya, you answer your presentation. Okay. Sir, Bhavna is there, sir. First, you will take Bhavna. Bhavna. Hello, Bhavna. Dr. Bhavna. Bhavna, you share your presentation. Uh, Dr. Bhavna? She is not uh, audible as well as visible. Okay, okay. Only yes, sir. So by that time, we should uh, take the presentation of Dr. T. Basanta Singh. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay? And we will see if. Uh... Actually, sir. Uh, sir? Hello. Dr. Basanta Singh. Ah, Dr. Basanta Sir, uh, actually I'm not having the uh, camera in my computer, so I'm presenting from the from the Tanya's computer, sir. No, no problem. problem. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Sir, uh, okay, sir, I'm starting. Hello, Hello, Hello. Hello. Uh, can I start, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You please uh, wait. Respected chairman and co-chairman and reporters and all the participants. Uh, I'm Dr. Basant Singh from ICR Manipur Center. Today I'm going to present the 
uh, a presentation in the development of STCR equation, soil test crop response equation for the quality protein maize in uh, acid soils of Manipur. Actually, maize is one among the most important crops of Northeast, even in the Manipur, but there is no suitable fertilizer prescription advisory in the state. And uh, due to lack of uh, uh, resources and uh, for judicious use of the fertilizers, the soil test crop response is cost effective and the plant need based approach which provides principles and tools for supplying crop nutrients and when needed to achieve higher yield without uh, uh, wasting the fertilizers. Among the various methods, fertilizers recommendation of one, uh, the one base targeting is unique in the sense that this method not only indicates soil test based fertilizer dose, but also the level of yield the farmer can hope for achieving good ag agronomic if the farmer performs the good ag agronomic practices. Initial uh, soil parameters of the uh, uh, experimental area was uh, pH 5.4, organic carbon 1.3, uh, nitrogen 230 kg per hectare, and the P15. The crop taken was maize SQPM5 variety, and the uh, um, recommended dose of uh, fertilizer. Actually, there is no uh, such prescription in the Manipur standard, but this is taken from the uh, Meghalaya uh, that our uh, institute has developed. So based on that, uh, these are the method of analysis and PK and the fertilizer recommendation was made by the calculated uh, based on the Ramamuthi et al, which is followed in the STCR project AICRP. The development of target yield equation was based on the calculation, various series of calculations, the kg of nutrient required per quintal and the contribution of nutrient from the soil, contribution of the nutrient from the fertilizer, contribution from fertilizer, calculation of uh, fertilizer dose was done uh, by uh, uh, using the above uh, equations in a uh, concrete manner. The site was uh, uh, in the site selected was in the Langol farm of uh, ICR uh, farm, and uh, the initially we have graded the plots into three uh, plots. That is, one is with the low fertilizer, one is with the medium fertilizer and the uh, uh, fertility, and the the one is with the high fertility. We have uh, created this one gradient uh, artificially by putting the, uh, in the previous year, we put the uh, maize crop. In the low fertil fertility plot, we don't put any fertilizer. And the, in the uh, medium, we put the recommended dose and the, in the high fertility plot, we put the double dose of the recommended dose and the crop was allowed to grow for uh, a season and we harvested and uh, again we met the plots, uh, uh, subplots with 21, 21 subplots and uh, with uh, 63 plots, we met the different uh, uh, combination of NPK fertilizer and uh, we started our experiment with the SQPM maize. These are the uh, interculture operations during the uh, experiment. And uh, the basic data for fertilizer e equation we found was the nutrient uh, for the nitrogen, it is uh, 2.91 kg per quintal. For phosphorus, it is 0 0.46 per quintal. And for K, it is 2.4. Uh, two and the soil efficiency were for the nitrogen, phosphorus, and the potassium was 26.2, uh, 61.09, and the potassium is 22.8. Here we can see that 
the fertilizer efficiency of the uh, uh, crop is uh, more than the soil efficiency, which indicates that fertilizer are much required to produce the crop, uh, maize crop in the uh, hill region. This is the fertilizer adjustment equation that we found for the uh, maize. And the initial, uh, this uh, is the first time for the maize uh, in the state. And the for fertilizer nitrogen, the equation is 6.16 into target yield. The target yield is we base on the four ton and the five ton. But this uh, SQPM maize in the potential in the uh, Manipur is, it goes up to the six tons also, but uh, we optimize the yield up to four and the five tons, which is uh, more practical in the state. And the fertilizer phosphorus 1.95 into target gel uh, minus 2.61 and uh, uh, fertilizer P, soil P. So, and uh, with the, this, by using this uh, equation, we uh, formulated a ready reconer of the fertilizer doses at varying uh, soil test values for a specific target yield. So this is the table where a farmer can use uh, uh, by seeing the test result of his soil, his or her soil uh, for the 40 quintal per hectare yield or 50 quintal per hectare yield. The conclusion from the experiment and the subsequent field trial, the fertilizer adjustment equations and the radial corner of optimum fertilizer doses at varying soil test values developed for maize grown in the hills of Manipur may be recommended for large scale use for the soil testing laboratories of Manipur after yield verification trials are over. Actually, this verification trial is undergoing now so after this one, I have not published any paper. So after adjusting the, this verification, uh, I'll be able to uh, uh, publish. So this is in the initial stage of the, uh, in the uh, trial, sir. Right, Basinda Singh, thank you thank very you, much for your presentation. You say, unshare your presentation first. And uh, yes. by that time, uh, Dr. Bahamna Saran is there. Uh, can you speak out? First, you unmute yourself and then you at least give the signal that uh, you are audible to us. Yeah. Dr. Basanta Singh, unshare your presentation. Dr. Basanta. Dr. Haldar, you can do that because you are administrator now. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> ah, administrator have everything in their hands. Yes. No? <laughs> ah. So, Bhavna is there. Ah, Bhavna Saran, you are visible. And your voice is not coming. Ah, your voice is not coming. Gala bat gya gya. <laughs> uh, hello. You remove your microphone. You remove your microphone. You remove your Dr. Bhavna, no, oh, no, your voice is not. Telephone se pooch le hai, usko unmute karne ke liye. So, if somebody has her number, so they can make a call to her. Hmm, wait. Right. Bhavna, रहे हैं तो हाथ लाइए एक बार ठीक आपका माइक्रोफोन अगर नहीं काम कर रहा है तो आप ऐसा करना मोबाइल
मोबाइल से हम लोग का आवाज दे दो हम उसको एम्पलीफाई करेंगे हल्दर को आप कॉल करो हाँ हल्दर को कॉल करो और अपना स्क्रीन को शेयर करो हाँ आप स्क्रीन शेयर कीजिए और मोबाइल से बात कीजिए डॉक्टर हल्दर आप इनको थोड़ा वॉइस को मैनेज कर देता हाँ आप स्क्रीन शेयर करने के लिए देखना नीचे स्क्रीन शेयर है ना शेयर स्क्रीन करके हरा रंग का बटन उसको दबाइए और अपना प्रोजेक्ट वो जो प्रेजेंटेशन है उसका करिए तो तो है आप 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 कहीं माइक्रोफोन माइक्रोफोन रिमूव कीजिए डायरेक्ट करो करो ना तो आपका कोई बात नहीं आप पहले प्रेजेंटेशन को चालू करो और आपको मोबाइल में बोलते रहो ना मोबाइल को हम यहाँ पर डाल देंगे आप ऐसा करो उनको स्क्रीन शेयर करा करके वो मॉक नहीं हो रहा ना स्क्रीन पे शेयर नहीं हो रहा फिर चलो आप ऐसा बोल सकते हो तो बोल दो आपको एक मिनट में मोबाइल में आ रहे हैं ना वो दो मोबाइल इधर दो हाँ बोलिए हाँ आप बोलिए हाँ हाँ बोलिए सिस्टम में आवाज तो हम वही कर रहे हैं नहीं आ रही आपका आप एक मिनट अब मैं उसको स्पीकर आप स्टार्ट कर दो इधर से हम आवाज आपकी स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं और कुछ नहीं होगा स्टार्ट करो आप स्क्रीन शेयरिंग नहीं हो रहा अरे नहीं हो रहा तो क्या करे तो कोई बात नहीं आप एसमेंट को आपके सामने है ना उसको देख करके बोल दो आपका हाँ हाँ जी थैंक यू फोन में बोलता है आपने बोलिए मैम नहीं हो रहा है नहीं हो रहा है नहीं हो रहा है कोई बात नहीं अभी देखते हैं इट्स ओके समाइम्स इट हैपेंस है डोंट वरी इफ हैपेंस If you get success, so then uh, I think I will request Doctor Sarvan to adjust her. Yeah. But voice is uh, voice is not coming, na sir. <laughs> There is no problem. Mm. So okay, just happens. So I think we should. Don't be too anxious, Bhavana Sharan ji. It will happen sometimes, sometimes. No one is doctor. Maybe system will be a little bit. फिर भी सिस्टम ने साथ दिया है सो आई थिंक सर वी हैव कंप्लीटेड ऑल प्रेजेंटेशन आप इसी भी बोलना आपको मोबाइल पे है ना हाँ मोबाइल पे बोल चलो मोबाइल पे बोलो जल्दी बोलो हाँ हाँ बोलिए नहीं मोबाइल को अपने पास रखिए मुंह के पास मोबाइल को कम से कम मुंह के पास रखिए आवाज आए
प्रेजेंट पॉपुलेशन अंडर दीज सर्कमस्टेंस इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ केमिकल ऑर्गेनिक एंड बायो फर्टिलाइजर सोर्सेज एंड देर मैनेजमेंट हेल्प शोन प्रोमिसिंग रिजल्ट नॉट ओनली इन सस्टेनिंग द प्रोडक्टिविटी बट हैव आल्सो टू बी इफेक्टिव इन मेंटेनिंग सोइल हेल्थ एंड एनहांस न्यूट्रिएंट यूज एफिशिएंसी इट इज डू एविडेंट दैट बायो फर्टिलाइजर लाइक एजेक्टोबेक्टर एंड पीएसबी एलोन ओडिंग कॉम्बिनेशन हैव ग्रेट प्रॉस्पेक्ट फॉर इंक्रीजिंग प्रोडक्टिविटी ऑफ व्हीट Uh, several studies have shown that the INM in wheat improves the nutrient status of soil and help in increasing yield of succeeding crop. The complementary effect of organic and inorganic sources may be pronounced in a cropping system rather than in a single crop. Thus, in intensive cropping system, wheat pulp millet cropping system became very popular in North Western Rajasthan. So, so that I would like to discuss about the plan of whatever seasons to be increased in the. सब इधर उधर इधर उधर बट इन केस ऑफ 
Harvest index 75 percent RDF was significantly superior over control, and it was at par with 50 percent RDF. For palmillate, 100 percent RDF was in the ratio of 60, 60 to 40 of NNP in kilogram per hectare. Now, our correlation and regression studies, correlation coefficient between green yield and yield attributes were computed by using the standard method described by Panchen Sukhatmi in 1985. In case of wheat, I mentioned the data in the table, the correlation coefficient of wheat firstly, the both the dependent and independent variables were significantly and positively correlated with each other, detected at a 1% level of significance. Linear regression equation of wheat, independent variables, every unit increase in independent variables increase the dependent variable that was gray hill increased up to some extent in time per hectare. Now I have graphically depicted the relationship between dependent, dependent and independent variables during both the years. Now about correlation and regression studies in permeate curve. This is also showing, uh, showing that dependent and independent variables were positively correlated with each other. And in regression equation, every unit increase in the different yield attributes increase the grain yield in turn per hectare to some extent. There is graphical representation of uh, different uh, yield, attrib yield attributes and yields. Now about conclusion, based on the two years of study, it may be concluded that 75% RDF along with FOM 5 ton per hectare and Adictobacter and PSB in wheat crop and 75% RDF in permeate that is in Khayu fields should be applied for better nutrient management for obtaining higher yields and better economic returns under wheat permeate cropping system. INM applied to preceding wheat assisted its vegetable effect and gave higher yield attributes and yields in succeeding pearl millet crop. Thus, it is concluded that integrated nutrient management is one of the most important components of the production technology to sustain soil fertility and crop productivity in the future, and that will be very useful for making environmentally and economically sustainable agriculture. Thank you. That was all about my experiment. Thank you. Thank you, Vamna. Finally, I, uh, you got success. Eh? Credit goes to Dr. Haldar. Eh, na? That, that, that's nice. So I think we should open session for discussion. For the audience, if uh, they have anything to share, please share their views, and if they have any queries, uh, queries will be taken up later on. And we have with us Dr. B. N. Hajarika, Dean, College of Horticulture and Forestry, Pasigat. We will take his view afterward. First, it is for the audience and other scientists. I think there is Miss Priyanka online to ask a question. Yes, yes, Priyanka. Okay. Miss Priyanka, you want to chat? I think she must be thinking of presenting <laughs> because she was not there at the time of presentation. Yeah, that is different. Man. Priyanka Gautam and yes, this is uh, Miss Priyanka. She's participant. Acha, okay, oh, okay, okay. Priyanka, you please. Uh, Speak what queries you want or you want to supplement something. I think there are no queries as such. Oh, yes, yes. No one is asking also. <laughs> okay, we'll conclude, sir. There is no problem. Yes, sir. So, I think we should take view of Dr. Sastri. You are a very senior person, please. Uh, you also uh, be because I am the organizer, I should be the last person. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, you are in the organizing team, okay? Then, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Hazarika, yeah, 
डॉक्टर हजारी का डॉक्टर बी एम यस सर आई हैव एंजॉयड द डे एक्चुअली राइट फ्रॉम द के सिंह साहब टू द डॉक्टर सराना आई हैव एंजॉयड ऑल द प्रेजेंटेशंस एंड इट वाज वेरी मच नीटली हैंडल्ड बाय डॉक्टर हालदार एज वेल एज सस्ते जी सो कांग्रेचुलेशन टू यू फॉर द कंप्लीशन सक्सेसफुल कंप्लीशन द फर्स्ट गेम अंडर द डायनेमिक चेयरमैनशिप ऑफ आवर देयर वेरी बिलव्ड पनवर सर so sir it is indeed a great opportunity to see you in the pics are face to face and uh, we are thankful all the best thank you thank you very much thank you very much so our co chair uh, professor ikra madam is busy in other work <laughs> okay okay no problem so i think then i must conclude so this was the second session of this webinar climate smart natural resource management so in this session we were having two uh, keynote speaker dr ml jat from simit and myself from iafsr and we had very good presentation from eight presenters and we could touch a lot of things and they were relevant to the climate is smart natural resource management in fact i am happy to share that it things which were uh, very good in terms of even environmental security when we talk about particulate matter or deposition that was the problem and this time we could realize when the covid 19 was in full bloom and country was under lockdown so the sky was so clear there was no dust there was no particulate so this time we could realize the importance of pollution and the speaker us is very well and another things of course everybody has touched it very nicely but the things which we do very quite common we are doing research we are publishing it and we are forgetting it thinking that now the thing has gone to the public domain whosoever wish let them take the advantage of that but there are scientists who are using that data also 30 31 year data used by dr r s bana really worth appreciable using epsing model i do believe that uh, uh, by using this model you could come out with a wonderful even uh, i can say the recommendation that should be one of the recommendation but now it is a number of uh, uh, our uh, technology has come up and a number of models are there advanced model even in epsim they have been integrated with another models also just to conclude the things and to draw out some of the meaningful uh, recommendation based on all these things we can come out with three to four recommendation which can go from this platform for their adoption first is the ghg emission neutral and lead scape based farming system need to be uh scaled up through cluster approach single farming approach we are taking up and we have taken up lots of but now we should at least shift it to the cluster approach it should be it may be rather a group of farmer in the form of ffpo or a group of village or a village like that <clears throat> so this will help in sustaining the farming system always as livelihood in future the second recommendation can go alternative production system such as integrated crop management organic farming agro ecology based production system in niche area as well as in niche crop is essential if we see the northeastern region this is uh, uh, sorry for interruption can you please repeat the second point Uh, alternative production system such as integrated crop management organic farming 
एग्रो इकोलॉजी बेस्ड प्रोडक्शन सिस्टम इन निच एरिया एंड क्रॉप इज असेंशियल because both the things niche area niche crops are there in north eastern hill region when we talk about sustainable even diversified production system for futuristic agriculture another point which can be a recommendation that is advanced agronomic tools such as conservation agriculture precision farming site specific nutrient management as well as stcr based nutrient management so that we can improve the nutrient use efficiency we can increase the production and productivity so these things need to be employed to reduce the impact of climate change and ensure the sustainability and last but not least the management protocol for climate smart natural resource management using various models including even epsim need to be developed or developing policy brief so these are the four things which came into my mind after hearing the uh, presentation so i could sum up in these presentation in four points these can be one of the even recommendation part of this webinar i am thankful to dr sarvan haldar for giving me this opportunity i am highly thankful to professor am premjit singh he considered me and thought that i can chair this session and i am thankful to all the speaker to provide me the information which helped me in making a brief point which can be served as a recommendation at the end i am thankful to the organizers as well as the staff of cau infal thank you very much thank you sir thank you then i request to dr evd sastri sir uh, my guru for formal vote of thanks uh, this is an august and also most difficult task of uh, thanking the persons because it's a group effort anyway um, dr as pawar needs to be thanked profusely not that uh, he has given uh, he has chaired the session the most important thing is that he has eased our work by giving four recommendations which will go into the proceedings thank you sir thanks for sharing your thoughts not only that you took all the pains to sit all through the sessions i am also thankful to our co-chair professor indra swarantham the keynote speakers dr ml jhat and of course the chairman dr s pawar himself then the oral presenters dr lalchand malo rs bana dr norangtham surbala and then dr sahu bhavna sharan dr tanya dr basanta singh all are young and that is the most important thing and it matters really uh thank thanks to the organizers and everyone who are involved in organizing this one but i have one small request to make to dr pawar sir uh, we have we are planning to award the best presentations so you may uh, give your recommendations secretly to dr shavan hal there if okay. you want you can rank them and accordingly we will see which are the ones to be awarded and so on and so forth of course we would like to encourage the students first thank you sir with that uh, one thing we want to tell is that we are concluding day one's proceedings and day two proceedings that is tomorrow we have two very important sessions technical session number 3 high tech interventions of resources in horticultural crops again we have two very important keynote speakers dr balra singh who is ex vice chancellor of uh, agriculture university jodhpur and we have dr t jankiram who was till recently um, adg horticulture and now vice chancellor of ysr horticultural university andhra pradesh and then we have lot of presentations all by eminent persons like 
प्रोफेसर बी एन हजारिका डॉक्टर आर कुमार डॉक्टर नेहा चोपड़े डॉक्टर पेरम्बेट देवी देन अनिता मीना रिंकू प्रकाश गढ़वाल एंड मरियम अनल सो दैट इज इन दिकनिकल सेशन नंबर थ्री टेक्निकल सेशन नंबर फोर is crop management for biotic and diabetic stresses which will be chaired by dr chandish r balal and uh, dr chandish balal was till recently director of nbair bangalore and then there are several uh, keynote presentations again by dr richa then dr jaypal singh dr ashok sinha and so on so forth it's a it's going to be a very lively session tomorrow whole day so i request all the participants to be online by 9:55 we will start positively on dot at 10 o'clock assuming of course the line conditions and everything are favorable to us with that we are signing off thanks to everyone who have joined us the whole day thank you very much once again thank you thank you thank you, thank you sir all <laughs> thank you sir thank you sir thank you yeah uh banana